we did have an audience slash member question, uh, which was, what are commercial buyouts for non-union commercials? So I've done some digging on this and it's, it's fairly simple. So a commercial will buy the rights to air the commercial for as long as they want to use it. Uh, so it could be $1,000 for one year, or it could be $2,000 for three years. And the actor is getting that lump sum of money. So they are getting that $2,000 or $1,000, depending on the contract, for that length of time. But they have absolutely no rights to the project once they have received that $1,000. But if the company that you film the commercial with wants to renew that for another year or two years or whatever, depending on how successful it is, they can re-up with you for a new set amount, depending on what the commercial made. So like if it did really, really well, it could be a five figure deal, or it could be another 1000, maybe $2,000. But that's, that's very much dependent on if they want to renew the contract with you. So, so I just want to make this very clear, especially for non-union performers. You do not get any residuals when you accept this buyout. You only get the buyout money, which is a good lump sum. But sometimes uh, it is better in the long run to become a union member because you will get residuals on those sorts of uh, projects. Right. Yeah. The, the difference in union would be you could get residuals based on where it's airing and what market it airs in and mm -hmm. how long it airs in uh, really in, in perpetuity as long as it's active. Uh, but also in, in non-union stuff, like you were saying, they you get the buyout. But then if if that buyout was only for a year's use and then they end up using it after you get you get those renewals, too. I've had mm -hmm. in, in non-union and union things, one of they call it mailbox money. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of this with commercials uh, where it's something I did five years ago. There's a Johnsonville sausage commercial that I did about four years ago. And like for the last four years, once a year, I get a check for like four grand nice. for a day's work that I yeah. did. So I think I've been paid like in the magnitude of 12 or 15,000 for 12 for literally 12 hours work one day to do it. I got paid nice upfront but they just keep using that commercial and it keeps airing. Um, another fun one I had was a Neutrogena commercial. It was actually my first paid acting gig. Um, and at the time it was a new media, just internet only commercial. So it was a little lower paying than normal. Paid maybe like, I feel like it paid maybe $400 for the session or 500, which is low for a union thing. But it was because it was an internet only. But what yeah. happened is the spot was really successful in the ad world, especially. And it made one of those end of the year, like top 10 funny commercial TV shows. So oh, really? then when the spot aired on a TV show, I got a residual check in the mail for that television airing, which was more than I got paid to do the commercial in the first place. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's one of the great things about um, TV and film um, is is residual income or renewal income where you're you're not just getting paid for the original time you're getting paid over and over and over again and and when you get to the point where you're on a series certain series especially when they reach things like syndication where they're they're they've uh, been around for like 100 episodes mm -hmm. that's a game changer where you just be a made man or woman for the rest of your life really never even need to work again uh because you have all this uh cashola coming in every year like think about what seinfeld's making on on residuals and and uh, now he's the executive they're the creators and executive producers of the show so that's a little different but mm -hmm. yeah yeah great question and and the thing that you want to do is um if you're a union person talk to your union rep talk to your agent yeah uh, really look at those contracts it's tough in the beginning you just kind of gotta sort of just trust and just whatever the money they give you is what they give you but uh, also ask those questions so you start understanding your contracts and making sure that. Uh, you and your agent know what's going on and how you're getting paid and when you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. uh, but the nice thing about being in the union is a lot that that is much more clear in the union. It's and non units really wild, wild west as far as when you get paid. I remember I would do work in the non union world and it would be like four months, five months later. I still haven't been paid because it's just like kind of pay you when you pay you. But in the in the not in the union world, there's bylaws 
where all the productions who are contracting with union members, they have to pay with usually within 14 days of the session. And then within, I think, three weeks of, uh, of when it airs as well, or it might be the opposite. Maybe it's within three weeks of the session and two weeks of with the, in the airing, but they got to pay you within a certain deadline or then they owe you uh, penalties as well, which is great. So the union helps protect you and helps protect you from, uh, from not being paid, which, uh, sucks when you're a non-union person because you get all excited. You're like, oh my God, I booked a gig, like got some money coming in and then you go do the work and then it's four months later and yeah. you haven't seen a cent for it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there's a bad, uh, not every company, but there's a bad um, practice I, f I feel is a bad practice where it seems like the talent in a lot of non-union productions, the talent gets paid last. Like the crew's been paid Catering's been paid, uh, all the contractors and carpenters and the locations people, they've all been paid. And it's like four months later. And because the spot hasn't aired yet, they haven't, they haven't paid the talent, which is mm -hmm. um, excruciatingly frustrating when you're, um, when you're an artist early on. Yeah. No, and I, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Uh, Good so question. Adam Daniel Mize has a segment suggestion for us. Uh, one recommended series film watches things you've recently seen that you recommend and the reason why uh we should watch them Two, take a scene from a series film you've recently watched and parse it out from an actor's perspective is it did i say that right parse parse it out yeah what does parse mean good question parsnip parsnip and old lace i think wasn't it an old uh it was an old play parse it out yeah, I mean that's yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah, that, I mean that comes under it's under the same category Analyze. of of uh, reading great scripts, watch great TV and and film with great actors, award winning. And I would say, yeah, watch watch. I mean, not that you can solely judge everything based on whether it's won an award, but um, uh, there's some things that aren't worth watching. So if you're watching crap to learn the craft, I I wouldn't watch that stuff be careful what you're watching mm -hmm. um but yeah there's so many films out there a recommendation we get a lot from Todorov is the criterion channel and it's only award-winning like top-notch like heavy hitting films jammed full of award winners and award-winning writing um so you, yeah you got to watch good stuff Another uh, comment is another shitty thing, Lars. You rarely get the footage from the non-union stuff and it rarely gets finished. All that work and nothing to show for it. Yeah, that can sometimes happen. I would say the biggest recommendation for anyone, uh, again, early on, a lot of the value in doing some of the work is getting that demo footage together so you can have a reel and then show people this is this is who I am as an actor. Um, that My suggestion for people is develop a, a, a personal contact early on when you're working. It could be the production manager, it could be the production coordinator, it could be an AD, um, some, some point of contact and ask them while you're on set or somewhere while you're shooting, hey, like, when do you think this is going to come out? Who do I contact? And so you, you, you uh, lay that groundwork up front where they're like, yeah, just shoot me an email and as soon as it's done, we'll, we'll send you. Because sometimes you can get raw footage. Sometimes you can get um, the, the, the end footage. I mean, ideally you want um, the fully edited, color corrected uh, footage with, with all the music and sound correction and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that does come from, from having that personal contact where someone is like, yeah, just shoot me an email versus if you try and track it down later uh, if it's commercials go to ispot.tv and the majority of commercials you'll find there a lot of times you can find things everything kind of lands on youtube as well so you can find things on youtube that then you can rip from youtube although sometimes the quality isn't as good um, because people upload them and they do funky things to protect uh, to stop the YouTube algorithm from flagging it as copyrighted material. Um, you've probably seen that kind of stuff, but yeah, um, make try and develop those relationships up front with people so that you make it clear like, Hey, it's really important to me. I really want to get this footage. Who do I contact? And they're like, yeah, just shoot Derek an email in in 30 days and he'll take care of you. Um, and if you don't establish who that is up front, then yeah, it's 
extremely difficult to get it later on. Yeah. Good question. 